Welcome everybody to the Red G Fox channel. Thank you. Now I'm still recovering from being sick and after coaching flag football, my voice has gotten even worse. We won 26 nothing, but it was more joyous, but also being sick. So I'm gonna try to get through this. This is one of the most exciting episodes we've yet to cover. And that is Rated X. Yeah. <clears throat> we are at the end of season two. And so with this, now I know you might say, hey, what's with the get up? Maybe celebrating, right? This is a big uh, episode for us. Actually, I was wearing this because I just attempted to try out for a part in a small time movie. Um, but when I got there, it was weird. When you read the script, it turned out it was a, a nudie movie. So I said, you know what? I'm out of there. Uh, the cops came, big mix up, but I'm free. I'm out on bail, so I'm okay. Um, <laughs> Scratch all that. If you know the episode, that is basically the summary of Rated X. When when we get to this first, IMBD 8.4 It is the number one episode of season two when it comes to rankings. We are in the middle of our tournament trying to find out the best fan favorite episode of season two. And at the moment, we got jealousies up there. And it looks like the Card Sharps is going to be making the finals as well. But throw that aside. 8.4, the highest rated episode. It's a top 10, no doubt. Everyone loves Rated X. And as we break down and go through this, you're gonna see exactly why. If you've already seen it, you already know. And it's gonna be fun to go down and relive some of the top moments. So with that said, let's get to the summary. In this one, we talked about Fred. He joins Lamont. He goes with uh, Rollo, Rita Lawson's boy. They are going out to try out for some small time movie because it's really a big time for the black actors to come out and they're getting roles left and right. And Fred's like, hey, these fools can act. I could give it a shot. So he sneaks along and joins them and then they go out for the part and it turns out it is an X-rated movie. And they're like, no, we ain't being part of no nudie. And just then the police come up, they get arrested. It's got nonstop each area of the scenes of the, the moments of this episode are just some of the best ever of Sanford and Son. And I think personally, this just, it's such a great way to end season two of, oh my gosh, this has been amazing. Um, so many great episodes of 7.5, 7.8, 7.9. And you're just like, now you ended on the highest note, about to enter the Hall of Fame season, the Chicago Bulls of sports, the season three. So we had to put some work into this one. And of all times, of course, my voice goes bad. I'm so bummed, but I'm gonna do my best to power through this and hopefully it's still enjoyable. Comment below if you say, you know what? Your voice was so bad I couldn't watch it. I'll redo this episode, I don't care once I'm healthier. But if you go, you know what? Your voice was good enough, I got through. Give it a like, comment, and then if you haven't already, subscribe. This channel's growing. Our community is one of the best around. I challenge it with any other community in YouTube when it comes to knowledge, enjoyment, uh, experience, and wisdom. Man, we got some of the best when it comes to Sanford and Son and television history comedies. So let's get to fun facts. <clears throat> now in this, Fred mentions in the episode, he goes, nowadays, when they're talking about getting in roles with Rollo and Lamont, he's like, nowadays, any football or a fool they come from a football team, they'll slap in front of a camera and call it a movie. <laughs> Who's he referring to in that era, that time frame? You got Rosie Greer, who's a former Ram. He was starring in a lot of movies. Jim Brown, perhaps the greatest running back, and you could debate that with anybody, if not football player of all time, Jim Brown. He was big in the movies at that time. And then you also had, and you have Fred Williamson, who was probably the first to really get that going in that genre of those movies in that era. He came out and did a bunch as well. So. That's who Fred was referring to in that time frame with that. And it was all factual. That's just not some opinion. In this, when they're in jail, here's another one. If you never knew what she was trying to read, what it was, or you ever forget to look it up, Esther was reading when they're in jail, a Bible passage from Isaiah chapter 42. If you know anything about the Bible, Isaiah 42 is a hall of fame when it comes to Bible verses. Verse five through seven, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prisons, and to release from the dungeons those who sit in darkness. So that's what it is, and it's basically what they are. She feels they're blind, she feels they're sinners, uh, what they are, but she's looking at it from perspective. They're in prison, darkness, and God's gonna set them free, you know? And I feel, we'll cover that scene right there, my personal thoughts on it, uh, regardless of how funny it is. But that was the Bible verse passage she was going to read there. And another fun fact, 
Most fans should know this, but there are scenes throughout this episode, including the jail scene uh, up and down. Uh, you will hear a big familiar laugh in the crowd. And that is Bubba. That is Don Bexley laughing. You, everybody recognizes his laugh, but we'll play a clip right here. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it right away and you go, hey, that's Bubba. He, I think, I believe he was in the episode two, two, a couple episodes before this. He probably was just on the set. You know, he was in the next episode, uh, who cares, season three. They weren't filming season three yet. But Bubba was probably hanging out on the set in case they needed him. And he was there always laughing. We see that throughout show history. You'll hear Bubba's laugh here and there in the background, in the audience, whenever a funny scene comes. So yes, if you thought, hey, that sounds familiar, that is Bubba in the crowd. Or watching in the background. Let's get to familiar faces. And man, we got some doozies, some really good ones. <clears throat> I'm going to try to be more calm. I think my voice is a little better when I'm not so high. So let me try to lower my voice. It might sound different. In this with familiar faces, we got Ralph James. Ralph James was the producer when he's counting the money and he's all, yeah, yeah, Don. He's pretty funny. He's got the cigar in his mouth. He is in Mork and Mindy, 83 episodes of Mork and Mindy, huge role there. Laverne and Shirley, he did Spider-Man the cartoon. He played Dr. Doom, uh, 26 episodes, either as Dr. Doom or a background guy. So we know he had voiceover work. And he did Six Pack Annie. I believe that's a movie. So that's it for his parts and roles. Now we'll get to a fun little coincidence with this as well. Jack, <clears throat> Jack the Leon, he plays the very hysterical director who calls Fred, doesn't he look delicious? <laughs> when he says that, Fred's face is so priceless. Uh, comedy gold, you know, as Fred is Clyde, one of our subscribers and comments, a huge member of our community. He always says how Red Fox has such a way with expressing comedy on his face reactions. And this one, we get plenty of them. And that was a great scene when he says, isn't he delicious? Or when he's holding his hand in the jail cell, Fred's face again, he does uh, display comedy without words on his face. So Clyde, uh, part of our uh, community, he is 100% correct on that. I had to throw a shout out there for him. But Jack DeLeon, he's the director. He's in, he starred in many things, the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, Barney Miller. In Barney Miller, he was in eight episodes. That's a familiar thing with Sanford and Son. A lot of people from Sanford and Son appeared in Barney Miller, but eight times. 227, Growing Pains. That's way down the line. That's I wouldn't have guessed Growing Pains with his kind of... When you hear some of the other things he did, he did a lot of westerns. But Growing Pains, he did Laverne and Shirley again, just like the previous guy we talked about, uh, Ralph James. So they started together. He was also in the exact same 1980 Spider-Man series that we just covered with Ralph James, where he did the voice of Craven the Hunter. So, and then in all 26 episodes as different characters as well. So they worked together in this and they worked together in the Spider-Man series. They were both in Laverne and Shirley. Uh, and he also did Archie Bunker plays the 1977 uh, cartoon, The Hobbit. Again, like I said, voiceover work. He. One more, one of our favorites. See if you remember, I always forget, I swear to you, until this minute that I did this video or the research for it, I had no idea he was in two episodes of Sanford and Son. So the guy who goes, the director in this appears another time. Now comment if you already knew. If you didn't and you're like me and you're like, I had no idea, please leave a comment. He was in season six, Sanford and Gong. Uh, the one where they, Bubba and Lamont and Fred team up and go against Rodney who tries to win the money on his own. He is Sven, what was his name? Sven Erickson. When he gets introduced, he's the guy that rings all the bells. Here's a picture of him right here. That is the exact same direct actor who played in the director. So I had no idea. He looks totally different, but when I hear it, I go, oh my gosh, that is him. But I had no clue that he made two appearances as two different characters in show history. Another reason I love doing this channel, I learn things all the time about my favorite show that I had no clue. So let's get to the next familiar face. That is Cal Williams. Cal Williams, he played the guard who said he'll, he'll, he, when he gives them their lunch and he says, I can warm that up for you too. So he plays the guard. He is in three different episodes of Good Times. He as well was in Archie Bunker's place, just as we saw with the previous actor. Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Now he did some writing as well. He did write uh, something called The Three Muscatels. That was a movie. Soul, another TV made for TV movie. And he did an episode of Magnum P.I. So I love to hear guys who did acting and directing or writing. 
And right here we just saw. So when you look at him next time you watch this episode or we break it down, remember, hey man, that guy went on to do some writing. I love to see multi-talented people uh, that I had no clue did that as well. Let's get to our last one. <clears throat> and he is made, that is Kelly uh, Thordson. He is Lieutenant Driscoll. That is a reoccurring character because remember the one earlier in season two, Lieutenant Driscoll was the one that Fred thought was the one that hit him in Whiplash. And he's like, that's him, I know it. That's him, they're like, that's the Lieutenant. <laughs> Fred totally messes it up. <clears throat> but that is Lieutenant Driscoll. He is in Andy Griffith. I remember, that's what I remember him first as. Andy Griffith, he's the one who had the young blonde wife and uh, Barney, he thinks Barney's trying to hit on his wife but he chases Barney, wants to go after him. But he's from that. He was also in three different episodes of Perry Mason. He did two episodes of Wagon Train, To Kill a Mockingbird, love that movie. Maverick, four episodes. And he went on to do many, even more than the previous few actors we talked about, many Westerns. He was in 119 total shows but a big chunk of them for Western TV shows. Shane, all of them, you just go up and down. So he did a lot. Sadly, after this, within I think four years, he passed away in his 60s. So that's probably why a lot of the things we look at were all before Sanford and Son. But that is it with our familiar faces. Man, we had some good ones because it was good. Like I said, all of them. I didn't know all the facts on these. And so that's what we try to bring to this channel is things about characters, actors that you kind of see on the show that we come familiar with and love and say, hey, have I seen them before? Or I have no idea what happened to these guys. You get to find out here on this channel. That being said, let's get to the best part of the episode. And that is the breakdown. Karen scene. Wouldn't he be delicious? <laughs> Here we go with the breakdown. I have to try to change my tone, so I apologize. But it's the only way I can get it without getting too raspy. So with the breakdown, we know we start out with Fred at home. He's making some food, making some soup. What kind, we have no idea. And so he's going, he's calling down Lamont. And he's going, Lamont, he actually laps in it, right? Which we know Lamont, we find out, does not like. But he takes some of it. Lamont comes out and he is dressed nice. And Fred's going, why are you going to get dressed up so much? Now I got to set napkins on the table. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not eating nothing. He's all, hey, this is cream of leftover soup. You can't just not have any of this. And Lamont's like, what is cream of leftover soup? And it turns out it's got, uh, and he's all, it's, it's basically soup with whatever leftover. And it's soup of me meatloaf soup. And he's like, it's going to be good. And Lamont's like, I don't want nothing you've been lapping in. He's like, I ain't been lapping in it. You know, and he's like, he smells, he's all, I just been smelling, sniffing it. And he's all, well, I don't want nothing you're sniffing either. <laughs> sniffing in the soup is just as bad. <laughs> so as they go to talk about Fred's like, no, this ain't like that canned stuff. This is homemade. This is mm, good. We got to see Fred do it. Let's watch this. Mm, good. Mm, good. Sanford's meatloaf soup is mm, good. <laughs> I love, I can listen to him sing. I cannot believe, I've never heard Campbell's Soup did not look for Red Fox and say, hey, we got to work a promotion here with this because this show was the number one rated and saw about, in this time, about 16 million views a week. He should have been the spokesperson for Campbell's Soup after that because he nails it right there and it's comedy gold. So with that, he's like, no. And then he goes, and then he takes a, a bite and Lamont's like, see, you're lapping in it. He's like, I ain't lapping in it. He's like, are you going to eat it? He's like, no. He's like, all right, I was lapping in it. <laughs> so when he does that, he goes, Where, why are you all dressed up anyways? He said, I, well, you know, I'm going out. He's all now. He didn't want to tell him why because he knows his dad. His dad his whole life has never given him confidence in that he could do anything, right? Up till the age of six, was it? In the show history, he says, I thought my name was Dummy Sanford. So there's no way he's going to give any kind of credit. And Lamont finally breaks down and tells him. He said, I'm going out, you know, uh, me and Rollo are going out for a, uh, a role in a small time movie. We're going to read for it. We think we can get it. And he's like, now tell me the part about Goldilocks and the Three Bears. <laughs> and Lamont's like, man, you don't, this is why, why do you think that I can't do it? And let's find out Lamont's answer to that uh, when he comments to Fred not having faith It makes me him. mad at you, Pop. That's the very thing that makes me mad at you because any old dog or cat could come in here off the street and tell you that he was starting a movie career and you'd be asking him for an autograph. So partly you feel bad for Lamont. It's funny. Fred says it and you're like, that's not factual, Fred. But as he says that, and then he even talks about Rollo, you know, Reed Lawson's boy, Rollo, why are you going to go try to do something with him? 
uh, and he says it's got to be it's up to no good and he even refers to him as Rollo and Hollow because they got nothing in their heads <laughs> let's see that clip right there. Rollo and Hollow <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Lamont's like, whatever. So he's like, he doesn't matter. He's going, whether his dad believes in him or not. Then we get the, and Rollo comes in, and that's when he's like excited, he's ready to go. And Fred, Fred doesn't believe anything they have to say. And Rollo even shows him a piece of paper. But before that, he's like, when they're about to take off, they're leaving already. And that's when he goes, oh, you know what? I, Lamont's like, should I bring a picture? I don't, I don't know if I should bring a picture of myself, right? You need one for your profile. And then Rollo's like, oh man, I hope not because I don't have one either. And what does Fred say? Let's look at this. Well, Rollo, why don't you go down to the post office and take one of your pictures down? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that part when he says that. It's so true, right? And, if, and, and, and that's when Rollo calls him. He's like, Hey man, and, and Lamont's like, don't, hey, you don't have to explain nothing to him. You don't have to talk to him. And he's right. But Rollo, being the kind of guy he is, is like, hey, jokes are jokes. You know, that's cool. And it's funny. We were just talking about this in another episode where I was like, what was the episode where he says this? And this is it. I forgot. And then he goes, you know, jokes are jokes, Mr. Sanford, but why you always treat me like a common criminal when I come to your house? And let's see Fred's answer to you that. You always treat me like a criminal when I come over here, Mr. Sanford. Because I want you to feel at home. <laughs> Oh man, so Fred just, like I said in this episode, we're only a few minutes in and Fred has already gotten off multiple zingers with Lamont, with Rollo, the funny part with the soup, and we haven't even left the house yet. So they take off and he's got that flyer that talk about the parts and he sees it and he's like, shoot, you know, I could do this. And he starts pulling out a couple actors. And you can see, let's listen to Fred as he does it right here. If I were king. And this is the guy he's actually portrayed, stars with right? Bill and he does a great job. He, he does sound similar to him. But the best is when he does uh, Christian Lawton, right? As he does Christian Lawton. Here's what he looks like. And then let's see what Fred looks like. <laughs> side by side. Man, he does it great. I remember at the time first seeing this, I'd never seen those movies. And a lot of times I didn't know what they look like. You know, you couldn't just pull up on the internet like you can nowadays. But I'm like, dude, when you actually see them, he does such a great job. You're like, heck yeah. Fred, is his voice work, his looks, he knows what he's doing. So rightfully so, Fred goes down and he takes off and goes there. And that's when we get to the quote unquote movie studio. And as he comes walking in, Fred looks so smooth. He's got the jacket, the shades, and he's looking good. And the, the producer, he's sitting there and he's like, what, you know, who is this guy? And, he's, and Fred tells him, yes, you know, I'm here uh, about the acting role. And he goes uh, uh, by advice by a couple people. And he's like, oh, you mean those two other guys who just arrived shortly? And he's oh yes. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, let me get uh, Don. And he, when he goes to get Don, um, he talks about some of the acting experience he has. And he does a, about some of his play work uh, the night before Christmas. And Fred's like, does the night before <laughs> I can't even say it. Let's listen to Fred say it where he does it best. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a rat. Isn't that mouse? Rat, this pageant was in the ghetto. <laughs> not, nothing was stirring, not even a rat. He's all, don't you mean mouse? He's all, no, nah, this was in the ghetto that is a rat. <laughs> Man, just simple things again. Fred at, at his finest, meeting a new guy. So... In comes Don, and man, I absolutely enjoyed this character fully. I think he is so good. I love him more in the jail scene, but he sits there and the way he looks Fred up and down, and he's all, wouldn't he be delicious for the harem scene? And Fred thinks, <laughs> Fred's all, yeah, yeah, you know what? He's like, Fred looks kind of shocked, but then he's thinking, hey, you know what? Regardless of this guy's acting a little strange, I'll be in a movie and I can do it, you know, whatever the heck may be. So like, yeah, yeah go in there with your friends, we'll, we'll be in it a bit. So he comes walking in, and then what is the L Rollo and Lamont? I love what Rollo says about Fred when they find out he's there. I know, man. <laughs> Maybe they're just going to use him for the crowd soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then that's when he's like, Fred tells him, he's like, you know what? That guy said I was delicious. You can even see Rollo kind of laugh on that. So they're talking about what they're going to do, because you're not going to be, the way Rollo says, hey, he'll be in the crowd. There's no crowd. You are the crowd. And that's when they're going to find out. And in comes the two, the director and producer, and they're talking about, you know, what they'll be. And they're like, yeah, yeah. He asks them, can you kindly get undressed? And then they start to for a second. And they're like, wait, what? Their faces afterwards are like, wait, why we? He said, that's it. Rollo's like, this is for our costumes, right, Jack? Once again, always love when Rollo says Jack. And he's like, oh, you haven't read the script. 
and they give it to him. And the director's kind of comical, he's laughing. He's probably excited to see these guys uh, strip down and perform these scenes. And they're looking at the script and they are in utter shock. Uh, and let's look at them right, let's see what happens when they finally realize they all look at each other and their reaction to it. Say, what kind of movie is this? Ain't nobody got no clothes on. <laughs> I love his friend. He's like, hey, there ain't nobody with their clothes on in here. And then he's like, yeah, you know, that's what it, that's what it is. He's like, it ain't, this ain't, sounds like a nudie. So yeah, it is. I ain't gonna be no nudie. I ain't gonna be no naked movie picture. And so they're irate, and Rollo doesn't want to do it, Lamont doesn't want to do it, and Fred sure as heck ain't going to do it. So at that point, Fred's like, remember, they're like, hey, what do you got to lose? And Fred's all about five of your teeth, and Fred's ready to whoop into him. And that's when they should have just got out of there at that point. You don't know it's going to get raided, but you're like, just get out of there. And right when they're ready to fight, in busts the cops. And now you're like, are you kidding me? It went from something to where it was an accident, and you're going to get out to now the cops are taking you. And they all get arrested. And as they go, what I can't say is, Fred, he starts suing his heart attack. You should have looked for a back exit and got the heck out of there. But Fred doesn't. He gets his coat and they go there. And now we open in the jail scene. And Fred's like, he's pissed. He's hollering out. He can't take this. And that's when the, the guard comes over and he's like, what's going on? And he's like, we want our phone call. You know, give us our phone call. And he goes, what phone call? And he goes, the one, if you've been watching Perry Mason, know that we can't. <laughs> Fred using TV for his legal rights. And Lamont's like, hey, I got this. I got this. I know who to call. And he's like, I, would have, I was going to call Sparrow and Tobin. And he's all, Lamont's like, who's Sparrow and Tobin? He said, Bubba's friend. You know, he's a lawyer, part-time lawyer, part-time delivery driver. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, I have to bring that in, is because we talk about, in other episodes, like when you get Sonny Cochran, or you get, uh, the, oh my gosh, why can't it? Dr. Caldwell where he works at the post office and he's a doctor, a uh, whiplash specialist. Uh, I didn't get forget, share money, the whiplash specialist. I always forget during our live shows. But that, or like I said, Sonny Cochran, where he's a sort of a lawyer, sort of a tailor type guy. You gotta do many trades, right? When you're in this community to try to earn as much money as you can because everyone else is doing multiple trades. So if you can get a guy who does multiple things. So that's who Fred wanted to call in the month. like, no, no, I got this covered. And one of my all time like top moments of this episode, but probably like if I had a top 50 moments in show history, is when they walk out and Fred looks at the <laughs> Rollo and he goes, hey, and he taps him, Rollo turns his off, where's the toilet? <laughs> and if you count, which I have, there is 14 seconds, there is a 14 second gap of no talking from either one and both of them especially Rollo who's got like the tongue in the cheek doing his best to hold back the laughter of nothing but the crowd and just them letting the joke live breathe right and then Rollo's all turn around and point that way <laughs> just look at the clip right there Rollo's reaction just turn around and aim yourself in that direction <laughs> And then Fred's like, man, I ain't ever going to be going, able to go in there, all white out in the open. And then Rollo's all, and Rollo's all, what did you think? It was a goldfish bowl. <laughs> and so the, the Rollo, the best is when he's like, well, when Fred says, I can't, I can't hold, you know, I can't go in here. He's like, I hope you don't get too long a sentence. And even Rollo, you can see a picture right here. He's trying not to laugh. He's trying. He's doing such a good job. I can only imagine how many takes and how many times they had to get this done, especially the one where it had a 14 second gap. I mean, I just gotta feel like they broke down so many times because Rollo almost did. But that is a classic sport uh, sports moment. That is a classic scene in Sanford and Son history right there. So then as he's sitting there, he's like, hey, you got a cigarette? And another of my favorite one. Like I said, I love when they go and he meets the director, uh, the beginning when he's talking with Rollo. But the whole jail scene is my top in this series, in this show history right here. Uh, when they're sitting there, and now he wants a cigarette, right? We've already been dying laughing. There's other parts I haven't even covered, right? I'm trying to sh shorten the shows to where they're not so long. But, you know, we did a lot of it on fun facts and familiar faces. But we're getting to the episode, and this is the best part here. So I'm trying to get every joke in the jail. But as he's sitting there, he's like, hey, can I get a smoke? And he's like, I thought you quit smoking. And he needs one now. And then he hears the director. He's like, Mr. Sanford. <clears throat> he's all, did I hear you when you needed a smoke? He's all, I have a cigarette. And he's like, yeah, okay. He's all, not, as long as it's not, let's see what Fred says. Oh, he was saying it's all right. As long as they know that, I can boot the artichoke. 
<laughs> so Fred's like, he goes over there and he's like, yeah, sure. And he reaches through the gel around the bar and he's getting it and he's giving it to him. And when he's telling him, he's all, you know, it can be tough sometimes being locked up away from sweetheart and loved ones. And he's saying that and Fred's like, <laughs> he's looking around and then he goes, and then when he goes to give him uh, the cigarettes, when he touches them, let's see that. I, you got, we got to watch that. Yeah. And Prince is like, nah, man, nah, you keep it, you keep it. And he's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that is, that, that is just like the tops. That's like, you, you can laugh probably just as hard, but not any harder, right? There's Grady, there's uh, Big Money Grip, there's Esther. There's always these funny moments, but you're like, when I watch this, the laugh -o meter is a 10. These last few scenes with Rollo and now the director, that's a 10, dude, when it comes to jokes. And he gets back and then in comes... Uh, Lamont, he comes back and he's like, hey, it's all right. I called Esther. Esther's on her way. And Fred is pissed. He's like, why did you call Esther? You know, she's basically, she's a big mouth. The whole damn town's going to know about it now. And that's when Rollo's like, oh, is she a talker? <laughs> Let's see what he has to say about that. You want to ask her a talker or something? Is she a talker? Her mouth's so big, you can put your head in it with your head on. <laughs> <laughs> and the guard brings up their, now they get their meal. And it's like a warm bologna, or a, a bologna sandwich. Um, and a couple other things, and then he gives them a toot for dessert. You get a tootsie roll, and he'll warm that. He's all warm that up for you too. And so Fred gets it, and they're sitting down, and he's like, "Man, I can't eat this. You know, this is gonna make me burp. This is this isn't good. He doesn't want this." You hear that, City Hall? I'm going on a hunger strike. And the brother's like, "Hey, eat your tootsie roll, pop, pop." And, you know, he said. And then Fred's like, "What a horrible way to spend my final days between two dummies sucking on a tootsie roll, pop." And that's not the last time we hear something about sucking. So. In comes Esther to save the day, we think. And that's when he gets up and she's like, Esther starts saying, hey, you know what? Uh, you're horrible. You know, she starts just getting into Fred and Fred doesn't want to hear nothing from her. And she's all, you just sit there and you keep sucking on that sucker, sucker. <laughs> and when I pull your chain, you bark. We got, <laughs> it's another one. It's like nine out of 10. It's so funny. Their exchange. And remember when he's like, she's like, I can't, I'm so glad my sister's not here to see the ugly stain you put on your family. And Fred's all, Esther, I didn't put no stain on your family. Your family was stained before I met you. <laughs> it's so good. And she's so pissed and she wants to get him. They're ready to fight through the bars. But then even what makes it even worse is that she sees Rollo and she's like, hey, hey, you right there. And Rollo's got his back turned. Why is he so? He doesn't even want to look. So aren't you Rita Lawson's boy? Dude, you don't have to say nothing. She's all, oh man, Rita's gonna feel so horrible hearing what happened to her son. You don't have to say it. She's such a gossiper, just like Fred said. She's gonna tell everybody when you don't need to. So you really care about Rita, you wouldn't have to say it, especially when Rollo didn't do anything wrong. Um, and then the, the Lieutenant Driscoll comes down, the one that Fred wrongly accused, and he's like, hey, hey, you know what? He's breaking up the fight. He's like, stop, stop, Esther. She's hitting the bars with the thing, and he's like, Hey, we had to run your check. And then like, can we get out of here? He's like, you've been exonerated. Your story's cleared. You guys are good to go. And then that's what Esther's like, no. And this is what I was talking about. At this stage, if I'm Fred, I'm going, officer, I'm going to have you wrongly, you know, busted for keep me in here. Get me out. Esther stops him. She's like, no, nah, no, nah, they ain't going outside. And he's okay. Because she's like, I got to tell them something. I got to read them something. And he's like, can't you read it to them outside? They won't stand still for this. And that's what she does, Isaiah 42, verse 5 and 7. And she starts to read it, and the show ends. But then that's when they're all, oh, come on, and they're turning around. And they, as much as we all need to hear something like that, it was also a true passage that, hey, it's actually a good thing. You are getting pulled from this, this darkness into light. You're getting out of here. But they still didn't want to hear it. You know, there's a time and place, and, and Esther was making sure they heard it. So it was funny. It's funny, too, because the guard and the lieutenant walk away. And now they're stuck listening to Esther. But, man... I mean, when you break down the episode, you're like, oh my gosh, we got Rollo. We got two new characters with the producer and the director that are both, even if they're minim minimal uh, appearance, so funny. The director is so hysterical and he probably should have, mm, do you think he should have been in our top 20? I mean, our number one, one and done characters? Possibly, he was funny, he had some great, but it was minimal, you know, I guess either way. But he was really good. Then we get to when they uh, go to film it and they find out what's going on. But in the jail cell, 
my gosh, man, from the, the bathroom, right, to hunger strike, to the sit and Esther, everything with Esther when she comes in, to the exchange with Rollo and Fred, which I love. You know, and I just put a post the other day, uh, Nathan, Nathan, Nathaniel Taylor was so good with Red Fox. They were friends. We did a go clutch back and check our channel. You could uh, check the video. Um, I'll see if I can even post it at the end of this where you can just click the tab and it'll take you right to it. But all about Nathaniel Taylor, we talk about how he inter he uh, did like a rehearsal with Red Fox. That's how I got to know him. And uh, it was from St. Louis. And they became friends off of that. A uh, whole backstory on Nathaniel Taylor. But he appeared with him in Sanford and Son. He appeared with him in Sanford. And he was with them in the Red Fox show. And he only left that after like six episodes because of a contract dispute. But they were so good together. Good friends and great chemistry. So to see them, just those two in the months on around, that is a classic scene. And 14 seconds of just staring at each other with a crowd laughter. I mean, that's that's a, that's why Rated X is an 8.4. And it's just, I think people overlook things like that. They, it, it is so funny, but when you actually go, wow. Not too many scenes in show history is there a 14 second, no one talking or doing anything gap, just staring at each other. And then you get the director the, the, when he's like locked up with sweethearts and Esther just, Esther just raised it through. It's a great way to end season two, which was the number two rated show in the, the entire uh, United States, I want to say, in television history at that time. So it's not over though. We still got more. Now we see Fred and he's at home and he's like, you know what, man? Some of this stuff uh, is disgusting. You know, they have out there. He's reading it on his own. Let's see what are the names of the shows. It's Sex on the High Seas. The story of a man, a woman, and a fish. <laughs> it's disgusting, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then after all that, Fred calls and he's like, man, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. These theaters shouldn't even be around. And he's like, hey, what do you got? What do you guys got this going on there? Wait, what happens? Wait. What happens? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, when's the next showing? And then he goes and the monk's right there and he bumps into him and he's like, well, you know, before I protest it, I gotta at least do an observation. You know, I at least gotta know what I'm go uh, protesting against. <laughs> he did that time when he had, the, remember the ticket to the kitty cat club and he's all, yeah, all the same thing with Bralo and the Mont. This time it's with the Mont, he's going to him again. So man, rated X, like I said, there is so much, I'm so bummed that my voice got bad. I could have pushed it off a week, but I'm really excited to get to season three. And I've been doing Tuesday breakdown for the last nine months and from holidays to other sicknesses to engagements of busy with work and life and coaching. I have not missed one and I didn't want to miss one now when I could still talk. If it was, if it was like my voice was on a few days ago, I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it if it stayed like that. Um, but comment below if it sucks, if you say, you know what, I couldn't watch too long of it because your voice was bad, I will uh, delete this and re-upload re a new one next week when my voice is better. Heck, it's fun filming this one. But that is it on season two. What a great season. Um, so yeah, comment below, please. Let me know your thoughts on Rated X. Where do you have it in your top 10 history? Uh, how much is it? Do you love it? And is there any flaws? I can't find any flaws in this one. I mean, from start to finish, I am laughing, laughing hysterically. And even though I've seen it about 50 times, it's always just, oh my gosh, on another level when it comes to Sanford and Son shows. Uh, if you enjoyed any of this, please give a like. If you have not, subscribe. We're not going anywhere. We're only getting bigger and stronger and at the peak of our show with season three coming up. So have a great week. Be safe. Don't get sick like I did. And we'll talk to you again on Friday. And look out. Today, we're on to round three. We know round one was jealousy on the best of season two episodes. Round two was the card sharps. We'll see who's going to be in round three. And pretty soon, we'll be at Rated X. And it's going to come down to Rated X, jealousy, card sharps, maybe the, the big party with Aunt Esther. Man, that is just like, you're asking me right now to choose between, you know, who's the number one out of like the top 10 maybe of like the the 80s or 90s and NBA maybe the 80s in the NBA history you're like holy cow that's tough to choose and that's how it is with our show and how great Sanford and Son was so be safe and we will talk to you again next week or Friday peace yeah.